Can you believe it? Five years, man. It's a long time, that. Connie Driver, how are you doing today? Hopefully they're doing all right wherever you're watching this from. And you join me in a random part of Shiga. I don't even fucking really know where I am. Every chance chan's buying some clothes. So I'm on a wonder. And that guy's beeping for some reason. Who knows? Who knows why? These things just happen. Anyway, today, I want a bit of a wonder. And we're going to talk about the fact I've been in Japan for five years. Five years. It's a bit windy today, so maybe you'll get some shit audio. I don't know. Them's the brakes, innit? Here we've got some rice paddies. Let's have a look at them. Authentic Japan, that. Look at that. Authentic, mate. Rice paddies, completed it. There they are, look, you can see them. Some more over there, but I've turned camera around now. Never mind. I take my word for it. So yeah, this week, to be honest, April 22nd this week, was five year Japan anniversary. Five years since I jumped on a plane um, and come to the old Japan. And yeah, turns out that were fucking mad decision, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, it's funny, man. Like, yeah, I've got a lot of thoughts, but I don't really know what they are. But I've got, I've got them. So, <laughs> um, you know, first of all, five years ago, uh, life were a bit shit, to be honest with you. You know, I don't like to get too bogged down in it, but, you know, uh, if things had kept going the way they were, probably wouldn't be here today. Anyway, let's leave it at that. So, decided, need to try and do something with my life. So, fuck it, let's roll the dice, let's do something new. Let's do something different. Let's just, I don't know, let's just not stay here. They're basically my thought. So, rolls around to 22nd of April 2016. Boom, on a plane from Manchester. On my way to Kansai International Airport. Fucking bobbing my pants. Absolutely shitting myself. Because, what petrol station's having a day off, that says. Hundred to Today is day off Sunday. Petrol station, day off on a Sunday. Day of rest, innit? Jesus doesn't need no petrol, so that's why. Anyway, um, petrol station. Closed on a Sunday. Whatever. Japan, yeah, so. Absolutely fucking bricking myself. <laughs> Thinking, like, bloody hell, what, what have I got myself in for? Yeah. Packed all my stuff into two suitcases. And off I went. Like Nelly the Elephant at Circus, that was me. And when I first got here, I remember that first day so vividly. I think there's actually some video on my channel about it, but let's go back to early days when I was filming in portrait mode on myself, on my iPhone like a dickhead, you know. Um, but yeah, kind of just landed in Japan at first bus ride, I took a bus from airport to, I had to go to Sanomiya in Kobe and I remember, let's walk through this residential area, why not, I remember me sat on this bus, just looking out of the highway and that, just being like, this is fucking mental man, I'm here, looking at official Nissan cubes and that, <laughs> and just being like, a bit overwhelmed, like, I can't believe I'm actually here. I can't believe I'm trying to do something. It's kind of cool. And then got, got to my apartment. Actually, I got to Sanomi and I sat on a corner in Sanomi waiting for 
somebody from my company to come meet me and show me where I'd be living. So I sat in this apartment. I didn't sit in an apartment because you don't sit on apartments, do you? I sat on this street corner. Two suitcases, jet lag to fuck. Waiting for someone to come and meet me. Uh, eventually, somebody did, rocked up. We took a train to Akashi. But I remember sat on this. It wasn't even a bench, it was like a, a wall, I think. Just looking at people going past and being like, fucking hell, man, what's going on here? Like, complete out of body experience in a way. It was mad. Anyway, so. Um, oh, this is nice. Nice little residential area. I'll let you look around for a bit. Bit of an out of body experience looking at this new life that was surrounding me. It was cool, got to my apartment. Uh, after some <laughs> confusion, going into the wrong apartment, that were a thing. But eventually got in my apartment. Uh, and like, realization sat it, set in. Which were cool. Um, then, <laughs> oh, let's go this way, this looks cool. Then, I had to, <laughs> my phone was nearly dead. I had to let people know that I'd actually arrived, you know. No internet. No SIM card, no nothing. Oh, look at these guys, they've got a cube just like me. Good car, good car. And there's some kind of painting on this building. Looks cool, doesn't it? Don't know what it is, but it looks cool. So, yeah, I had to go <laughs> and somehow charge my phone. So I thought, fuck it, All right, I'll go for a walk then, innit? Set off on my merry little way to buy a USB charger from somewhere. That's all well and good. Because I eventually found a convenience store. And I could buy one. And that were a fucking rigmarole in itself, but I managed it. And then <laughs> we got to a problem. Where I realised, I don't know where I live. <laughs> ah, fucking! Should have left some breadcrumbs or something. Didn't know where I lived. Didn't have my address written down. It was all in an apartment. <laughs> I got no internet, so I couldn't check on Google Maps where I were. Oh dear! I remember walking around for about an hour, just in circles, trying to fucking spot some I recognised. Because, you know, everything we're new, I was like, whoa, cool, look at this thing, whoa, cool, look at that thing. And then <laughs> realised, like, oh, I don't know which way I've come from. <laughs> oh, dear. Got back just in time for Gas Man to come and turn gas on. That was good timing. To be honest, it was good timing. And then, you know, tried to unpack a little bit. And then it got to night time. And realization of what actually occurred set in. Remember being laid on a fucking wooden floor, no bed, no futons, just clothes out of my fucking suitcase to lay on. Jet lag to fuck. Tired. Completely overwhelmed by, you know moving to the other side of the world. I remember just thinking like, what the fuck have I done this for? Like, why? Why have I done that? Um, and I'll be honest, I cried a bit that day. Because I was just like, so overwhelmed by everything. I didn't know what the fuck to do. So, my first day were eventful. And at first in Japan, honestly, I didn't particularly like it. If I'm totally honest with you, I didn't like it. And I remember after a few, maybe about a month, I was like, I don't know if this is for me, fam. I don't know if this is for me. But I said to myself, like, if we're going to go home, at least stick it out six months, innit? A bit long. 
Let's go this way. Near a school. I don't like filming near schools. Um. But yeah, I thought if I'm gonna go on, may as well fucking stick it out six months. I've come all this way. May as well at least crack on in it. That's a good job I did, really. Cause I'm still here now. Look at this vending machine. So this is the Shiga Lake Stars, uh, which is a basketball team. One for lakes, all for Shiga. That's not how that saying goes, but fair enough. Go, go lakes. Um. Anyway, so yeah, still in Japan, five years later. You know, my life changed considerably since that day, you know. Still living in Japan. Got a nice apartment, got a car, got a wife. <laughs> Don't know why wife were third. She should have probably been higher up that list. Um, you know, life's good in grand scheme of things compared to where I were. I mean, I'm a kind of person where I feel like I could always do better, could always do more. Like, case in point. I put a post on my Facebook, my personal Facebook this week. I'm like, oh look, five years. And one of my old friends, you might remember from some old videos when we went to Akashi Bridge and that, Chi Chan. She commented like, something like, oh, five years, half a decade, you must be proud. And then my mum put, yeah, like, oh, I'm proud of him. And I was sat thinking like, why? I ain't done out. <laughs> I didn't do out. I got on a plane and existed for five years. That's not to be proud on. And I said this to Eddie Chan. She's like, yeah, but you've done loads. I'm like, but I haven't done all. It baffles me. Like, I really don't feel like I've done all. And I don't know. Like, I always felt like what I did when I'd come to Japan and start a new life, I always felt like anyone could do it if they had a chance. If they wanted it, it's not hard. I mean, there's some stuff that's annoying, but generally, I've not really felt, except for that first bit, like it were overly difficult. I've always kind of felt like it were the right thing to do, I think. So, being proud of just what you're supposed to do, I don't know, a bit weird. So I found that one a bit difficult, to be honest. But hey-ho. Um... Yeah, I don't really know what this video is trying to achieve. When I come to Japan, it were an escape. And some days, especially recently, uh, you know, you question if you made the right decision, like, am I doing the right thing staying in Japan? And probably I am. Probably. Like, probably it's a good thing that I'm in Japan and got a job and settling down a bit. I guess, for want of a better term. And yeah, overall, happy. I mean, no, it's perfect. People have this idea in their head about Japan being fucking some perfect thing, and it's not. There's a lot of shit about Japan that annoys me. Um, most of it made worse by the language barrier. I mean, I've been learning Japanese what, five, six years now. I'm still shit at it. Like, you'd think after six years you'd be fluent, but I'm not. And, yeah, trying to do anything can be really difficult. Like, let's lighten mood a bit. Like, recently I bought an aircon for bedroom. I'm trying to get it installed. An aircon company rings me and they're like, right, we need to ask you some questions. Like, safe, ask away, go on, treat yourself. And they're like, asking some questions, like, is there an all-link wall and you know all this shit to set it up? And they're like, is there a power supply? And I said, no. And they're like, I don't worry, engineer will fit one for you. It'd be an extra, I don't know, 80 quid or something. Like, safe, whatever. Engineer's coming on a Monday. All right, safe. Engineer rocks up and he's like, no, I can't install that. <laughs> Why? He's like, well, you ain't got a letter from your apartment building. What the fuck do I need a letter for them for? I'm like, well, I can't do it without their permission. 
All right, fair enough. Wasted visit from you then, innit, son? <laughs> so I rang apartment building and they're like, oh, I don't know about this, I don't know about that. So I rang aircon company and they were like, oh, to Japan, nobody says no. Rather than be direct and tell you what's going on, they'll just be like, yeah, well, uh, uh. you're left in the middle trying to fucking pick up pieces, you know. Whenever I call one of these companies, man, it's all it's same. Like, I pick up phone, we're like, in Japanese, like, sorry, I'm a foreigner. I don't really speak so much of the old Japanese. So how about cut the crap and just speak in basic Japanese? Do they fuck? <laughs> They'll just be like, Hi, kashikomanimashita! Which is like some fucking Kago shit. <sighs> You're not gonna speak easy for me, are you? And they're like, nope. We're gonna use the same complicated Japanese we would to show respect to Japanese people. It's safe. Well, that's good for me, isn't it? That's great news. So many phone calls and filling out forms and shit later. Still no aircon installed. So hopefully that's coming soon. This is getting a bit warmer than us. Hey, up I'm back again at this petrol station. Gone round in a big circle. He's having a rest though. He's having a well-deserved rest on a Sunday. For some reason. Mad, isn't it? Madness. So yeah. Anyway, five year Japan anniversary, bit of a walk and a talk. Or oh, a ramble and a ramble. <laughs> da, 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 da. Fucking jokes, mate. Jokes and jokes and spaghetti. But yeah, everything's all all right. Five years in reflecting on my choices on that. But you know, many of my close friends all test like completely fucking different person. I don't know if that's good or bad. But I went a right fucking tacking beforehand. So you know, life's looking good in it. I don't really know what the future holds. You never do. After a couple of years in Japan, I were like, yeah, I'm staying here forever. These days, I don't, don't really think about it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. All depends on it. But yeah. So anyway, that's enough for that. Uh, channel stuff. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. I've got my Twitch up and running. I feel like doing some live streaming on Twitch. Uh, I did do some live streaming on YouTube, as you may remember, but uh, it were a ball like. <laughs> Plus, I want to do some games and stuff that's not related to Japan, so I thought I'll make a Twitch channel. Something like twitch.tv slash jadan dan 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 dan. Just some amount of dans until you find my name. I don't know how many. And just playing shit like Pokemon cards and. Um, Dominion, another card game, and trying to set up some emulators so I can play some old video games and that. But it could be kind of cool. So that's what I'm going to do soon. So if you aren't already, you want to go and check that out, do me a favour. Oh, wow. Arm is in. Boys are back in town, are they? That's over there's like a, an army training base, I think. But yeah. So that's it. Follow me on Twitch. Cheers for the support of it five years. And I guess, as always, until next time, <laughs> Jamata. Cheers for finding my video today. I appreciate that. There's some other videos on screen if you want to watch some stuff about Japan. And we've also got the Jadan fam on Patreon who are awesome and support what I do. That's patreon.com slash Jadan Dan Dan. Before you go, do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. Cheers!